Hello, everybody. This is a continuation of the previous uh, story time I did about the uh, wedding rumble that occurred <laughs> back in the late 80s. So uh, when I was doing that recording, I was very low on storage for my, my phone SD card. So I kind of uh, made it short. So I want to go back and tell some more about this crazy gal that came up from Dallas, Texas. And that hurts me to say that because I love Dallas, Texas. But uh, you can hear all the ducks in the background. I apologize, but uh, I love it out here in the lanai. So my friend Ronnie Williams was a Delaware trooper. He, he, he got killed, but um, we, we were good friends. We used to dispatch for the Delaware State Police. He, he was fortunate enough to not have a color vision problem like like I do. I and mean, he became a trooper. So uh, we hung out a lot together. We, we we always had something interesting happen whenever we got together. So uh, what what you know I told you what happened at the wedding and the reception. This uh, this is partly leading up to the rehearsal dinner. So Ronnie lived in an apartment at his parents' house. Uh, which is in downtown Wilmington. It was an older house, big, big house. And it had basically five apartments in it, like the main house and then two two apartments upstairs, uh, one on the side and one downstairs. So Ronnie lived upstairs. His grandmom lived in an apartment across the hall. But uh, so we, we go, Everybody goes to the rehearsal dinner. That turns out okay. There's no problems there. Everything's fine. The uh, the sister gets sauced up, not not out of control, but she gets sauced up. And um, so I, it just worked out that I was just going to spend the night at Ronnie's house. And uh, so Ronnie and his fiance they they go to sleep in the bedroom. And I was going to sleep on the floor, and the gal from Dallas was also going to sleep on the floor. So we had like uh, comforters and what have you laid on the floor. I was just there to sleep, no hanky panky with this young lady. And uh, <clears throat> so, you know, the lights are out and everything's, you know, I'm about to doze off, and I smell something funny. And I roll over and the gal is smoking a joint. <laughs> so I'm like, what? I said, how freaking stupid can you be? She goes, it helps me sleep. I'm like, no crap. I'm sure it does. Put that thing out and get rid of it. I said, you know, there's a trooper in the next room, right? You know, and she didn't give a, 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 a hoot about anything. So, uh, that's how I kind of knew this gal was going to be problems, you know, at the wedding and such. And then uh, after all that, after the wedding, the next day, we we all had to head down to the beach. Ronnie had a, a shift party, which everybody on, there was, it was all male troopers. I think there was one female trooper there. And, um, uh, so it was funny. We, we get down there, and she you could tell she was from Dallas, Texas, real heavy southern draw. So everybody's sitting in a circle. We're on the beach just chilling. And we told her before we got there, like, whatever you do, don't open your mouth. You know, if you try and talk, we're just going to say, you know, you have laryngitis or something. Just do not talk. So <laughs> we're down there, and this one big trooper, who had been in the Marine Corps, pretty, pretty buff guy. He was talking, he was a little on the crazy side and he, everybody, uh, great. Hold on one sec. Uh, I'm sorry. Usually I, uh, I put it on airplane mode. I forgot to do that. I'm slipping in my old age, but so we're, we're all sitting on the beach and, uh, there, everybody was talking about that that event at the wedding and the, the one trooper, trooper wall says if i ever see that gal and trust me gal <laughs> was not the word he used he said i'm gonna punch her right in the face 
<laughs> so about three minutes later, I said, Ronnie, we, we got to go. <laughs> we got to get up out of here. Let's go. So we, we took off and it was uh, Ronnie, his fiance, Frankie, the crazy lady from Dallas and myself. So we got out of there before <laughs> everybody knew. This was the crazy gal that got a $25 fine for punching a police officer in the face and the groom spent the night in jail. Go figure that one out. Anyway, so that was a just a short follow-up. Uh, one of the viewers wanted me to follow up with that story. Uh, nothing, I don't think it's anything super interesting. It, it was funny at the time. Oh, yeah, let me back up and tell you this part. There is more to this story. This, this part really, really, really ticked me off. So... I, you know, I was dispatched for Delaware State Police, loved it. I, I really relished that role, and all my friends were troopers. You know, I prided myself in, you know, being a law-abiding citizen, all that good stuff. So I, I tell Ronnie later, I, di I didn't mention any about what she did with the, the joint or whatever, because it was right before the wedding. I didn't want to call chaos and drama and all that stuff. So I waited until after the wedding. Uh, I think we were at the beach when I told him about her doing that. So he, he, <laughs> this is crazy. But sometimes when you do the right thing, it, it, it turns, it, it turns out to be the, you get the wrong result sometimes, but that's G money's life. But I tell Ronnie this and he's like, no way. And I'm like, yeah, dude, I'm telling you, you know, what you think I'm making this up? No, this is what she did. And so Ronnie gets talking to his fiance, Frankie. She talks to the crazy sister and does not deny it. She says she tells Frankie that I was smoking the joint with her, which was 100 percent BS. Right. So Ronnie's telling me and I said, Ronnie, are, are, are you? He goes, well, well, were you? I'm like, you, you got to be an idiot. Ronnie and I went to a party probably, I don't know how many years prior at the University of Delaware. We get in there. Somebody in the back kitchen area of this, there's a lot of college kids, was smoking pot. So I turn around and haul butt. So he knows my feelings on that. And I, I can't believe he was questioning me. So <laughs> so, so that's. That goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Then they find out she had been institutionalized uh, for a very long time in some mental health hospital in Dallas, Texas. So uh, eventually the, the, the truth came out. Everybody saw the light. And uh, but for a while I was being uh, scrutinized or there was doubt in their mind whether I had smoked marijuana or whatever. I was trying to cover it up. The first thing I did was, Ronnie, if you believe that, I said, I will go to an internal affairs the very next day. And I said, I, I will allow them to put me on a polygraph. I said, I have no problem doing that. I said, but if you're doubting me or anybody else doubts me, I'm, I'm going to prove my innocence. So everybody shut up. Everybody believed I didn't have to go that other route. But, you know, it's sometimes you, you do the right thing. And like I said, you get the wrong result. So that's it, folks. Uh, that's the end of that little follow up to the previous story time. Remember, folks, always know your legal limits and uh, get out there and help somebody. All right. Let's hear your stories. I want to hear people share stories with me. All right. Peace out, folks.